Um, it's uh... <laughs> so you 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 caught me there. <laughs> oh, because it's just it's so there's a magical thing about uh, looking at an old building and seeing how all the history behind it and all the people that live there. It would be a bit of a shame to just destroy it. I just think this world would just lose touch. It would be it would be horrible because like, we wouldn't respect what happened before. They've made so many people's lives what they are and it's always been there in the lo in local areas. They're people's memories. They remind you of your past. They're shaping our futures. So it's very important that they, uh, we keep them very much kind of alive. If we can walk down the street and see these old buildings, I think it really offers us something that we can tie into our, old, our own identity. Why are we here? Who are we? Who is our family? Where have we come from? I think those questions can really, we can really begin to answer them by taking a look into the past and by saving old buildings that sort of tell that story for us. To knock them down would be um, quite a terrible crime. If you touch that listed building, you'll get fined. I will. <laughs> right, okay. Yeah, <laughs> but right. I wouldn't knock them down. I would, I would definitely reuse them. You're kind of balancing that modern purpose while kind of preserving its, its historical integrity. I don't believe in just knocking old buildings down because they're old. Good. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> glad we uh, glad we settled that. Uh, From day one, when we went down to Newbigin to visit the Rocket House, the fact that we had to crawl through a small door in a big door, it was like going into Narnia, and it was their expressions, what they said when they went in. They were totally taken in by it. It was a big mystery for them. And from that moment, they were captured. We actually took a trip to the bridge and had a look inside. And we saw what needed repair and what didn't need repair and what we could keep, what we, what we could fix, what we could have to get rid of. When you go inside and you see all the work that's being put in, it does amaze you because it must have took a long time and a lot of hard work. It's a bit of a hidden gem. And when people step inside, I think there's a real wow factor. It's a stunningly beautiful building with features that you wouldn't get to see in a modern building. We have to bring it back to a high standard of maintenance. It's the old building on the outside will be put back to being the old building and inside will be a modern twist, hopefully. It's a ruin now, but it used to be like a fortified house and it just changed every time somebody knew about it, basically. But now it's a, it's a ruin. We went to visit the library to see what it looked like and uh, the things we could change and the things we couldn't change. We've thought of uh, making it a soft play or a daycare, a learning centre, a butterfly world, a restaurant, a bakery, museum, a stage, a hotel and a b, &B. Do they take that building and make it look like it was? Or do they take it and then add some new elements in to try and mix the old and the new? And I'm hoping that journey will sort of help us work out old and new, what's the difference? Today what we've been talking uh, to the students about, we've been explaining the Lyme cycle, uh, a bit of a chemistry lesson and a theoretical lesson to start with. Take them outside, we do a Lyme slake outside of this building. We've been carving a stone flower, just a simple architectural feature. They used to have these things called mason's marks, like in the olden days where there used to be all these stone masons making buildings. So we had to like design our own and carve it into stone. I've been learning axes, draw knives, sharp tools, which they really didn't want to touch at the beginning. And at the end, it's like, OK, go and cut that log, do this, do that, and they're off by themselves. The hands-on approach that we're using today definitely gives us a better connection to uh, how things would have been created previously or, or a notion of how what we're trying to conserve might have been created rather than through uh, mechanized or electrical processes. It's opened my eyes up, to be honest, from what I'm used to. It just shows what traditional methods were used in MDS. To see the way they change through a session um, is just wonderful. Uh, they come away with a sense of empowerment that they can do something that looks to them very frightening at the beginning. What I enjoyed about it is just experimenting with new equipment and all that. Since what we since what we do today is so easy and back then it's so hard so we can challenge ourselves. Well, before I actually done this project I wasn't too clued up on construction or engineering or anything and actually doing this project, going in and having a project myself to renovate which is 
potentially what I have to do in the future, I want to go to uni and get a job and stuff. I'm actually learning getting insight now, early, so I actually know what it's going to be like. So obviously learn about the costs, repairs, maintenance, what an actual building actually is, what you can do, with it, what you can't do with it, there's loads. Old buildings need you need they need much more attention than you thought and the, the, the number of specialists that you need to come in instead of just you can't just use the standard builders and tradesmen you have to get specialist people in because of the kind of nature of the buildings we don't really get a lot of experience of what jobs we can do and with this we have like the wood turning and the stained glass making I know not a lot of people do them but if we did want to go into that field of work we now know what it's like to do that figuring out ways to save the building without hurting the things that make it important or the things that make it significant. Learning about why people become attached to a place, why they visit a place time and time again. What is it in a building that makes people come and want to see it? And then taking all of that information and forming a plan around it. To watch the children grow and experience, you know, an amazing opportunity. And I've actually learned some new things on the way, such as jobs that I would never have heard of as well. So it's been a pleasure to actually be part of it. Hopefully they'll get a bit of appreciation about what conservation really is and what we need to do to preserve these beautiful buildings for future generations. It's taken the focus away from standard type of learning. It's a proper vocational type of learning where they go out and about in the community. Um, they've interacted with other people. We um, surveyed a couple of people about um, what we were going to be doing our project on and we were asking them questions about whether they would need it or not. We researched about different jobs like joinery, roof thatcher and the technical designs. After this, um, I think we're just going to be going to the judges and uh, presenting all the things we've been doing. The competition is where all the schools come together and show off what they've done to an old building in the local area. We're looking for um, students to understand the people involved in the process of rescuing um, buildings. We're looking for the students to understand what best use would be fitted in those buildings. How, how those buildings could sort of uh, live on. I think with a Masters it's too easy to get a bit too theoretical and academic without realising what's actually going on in the real world. So this was a really good example of um, applying our kind of skills we learn in the classroom and applying them to kind of a real world context. It's not just a technical essay, they've put together a portfolio and a package and a presentation which they're very, very proud of. And once they're out there in the real world working as architects or quantity surveyors, um, they're going to spend a lot of time presenting to clients, trying to win bids and this sort of thing. So the more we can do presentations, and not just presentations to me, their tutor, but presentations to other professionals, that's just great. Working on a project yourself where it's in Newcastle where I live, where it's an iconic building, where everyone knows it. And for me having the opportunity to work on it, it completely changed it. So I appreciate all buildings now. So we really want to ensure that young people see the beauty of working in conservation craft skills and it would be brilliant to um, still be around in 10 years time and see a van parked outside and that be a young person who's worked on a historic building who's now got their own business. We're building houses today using like cheap materials and trying to build affordable homes with they're just not lasting as long as what some of these buildings are and some of the, um, the science that goes into these buildings that went in a long time ago, it, it's worked, you know, it's, it's kept them alive and they're, they're, still, um, they're still standing. If you're going to knock them down in 25 years, what's the point in, in building them in the first place? You might as well uh, adapt and reuse a, an old building. Buildings like the one we're in today have got a short life expectancy. They're cheap to build. So we can build them up cheap and therefore we work on a 30, 40 year life and they can be replaced because usage changes. So this at the minute could be a workshop, it might change into for example a garage, but there is not a lot of cost involved in putting this up. This building, was it's a kit form, it was built off site. It was manufactured in a factory, brought to site and bolted together. Now that is a totally different scale and a, a different mindset to the buildings that we are looking after that bring so much value to an area. The 
The fact that these buildings were constructed to last decades, centuries even, or millennia, as some have, um, represents a different, a different perspective on, on what we're meant to value in life. Um, if you're constructing a building that's only supposed to last 50 years at most, um, how significant are the, the events that take place in that building? How much value do they hold for the society? If you've got something that's meant to last for a thousand years, obviously the function of that building is integral, if not central, to the values of that society. There's a softness, there's a, there's a humanness about old things, old buildings especially. There's, there's that maker's mark in it. There's the imperfections that we all have within us, and you can see them there, whereas plasterboard and sheet glass, you know, it's pure, defined. There's, there's nothing there that's wrong or out of place. But there is in a cathedral, and I think that's what give old buildings their true pleasure to look at. They're comfortable, comfortable to the mind.